lectures. My name is Lino Camprubi, and this is the this is the panel within the webinar dedicated to the human and social sciences. I'm going to briefly talk about my own project and experience. My project is called the Deep Med, discovering the deep Mediterranean environment, a history of science and strategy. And although it was awarded already, I think two years ago, it started in March. That's also something, if you're planning on applying on an ERC, you should know that, that if you get it, you can then delay the start uh, all, even by a year, which is what I did. My project belongs, as I said, to the, sorry, to the human and social sciences um, section. Whoop. And as you know, there are different panels within there. There, there is economics, anthropology, geography, psychology. The panel to which I applied is called the study of the human past and it's pretty straightforward archaeology and history. But I, I guess in each of the panel from year to year, things vary quite a lot, but I suppose they vary even more from panel to panel. Just keep in mind that our experiences are perhaps limited to the particular context in which we applied for the ERC grant. But I suppose some of the things are kind of common and the common things were already discussed in the previous part of this webinar. In any case, this is called human science and, Soci and social sciences. As you see, it's a big umbrella that, that basically hosts very different disciplines with very different traditions. And each of them is going to expect something from you that you know much better than I do because it's your field, right? That's obvious. Okay, my project was about the historical making of the 3D Mediterranean. So how the Mediterranean Sea as a space became in the minds and practices of economists, of scientists, and also of military personnel, how it became a true volumetric space, how they went to th from thinking of the Mediterranean Sea as a surface, as we see normally in maps, uh, to thinking about it uh, as a volume in which you needed to take into account depth, the column of water, such and such. That was a project as I presented it in the first try. So I had two tries for the ERC. My first try, I made it to the interview and this is what allowed me to immediately in the next year apply a second time. So this is important. Your goal in the first try is obviously to get it, but probably even more realistic, to, your goal is to make it to the interview phase. Once you've made it there, I don't want to sound too fatalistic, but you can do a lot in the interview, but you have already been ranked. And when I got, I, I did the interview, I, I, my feeling was a little mixed because in the interview at that time it was in person. Then the second time I did it online because of COVID. But when I did the interview in person, I noticed that <laughs> quite a lot of people in the panel were just looking at their cell phones. And, and this was a little discomforting and it gave me the feeling, okay, who is listening? And then when I got the feedback, I realized what was the problem. I was already ranked 56% and only the top 41 of the proposals were funded. You can do a brilliant interview and I don't know, three people ahead of you can do a terrible interview and then you can escalate that. But honestly, I have the impression that because the interview is already ranking, the interview is very important, don't mess up, <laughs> but the ranking is already there and it, it counts a lot. This is the, the overall estimation of that, of that first try in which I didn't make it. This is what they, what the panel said, the feedback I got, the general feedback, there is, then there is feedback by each of the reviewers. And this feedback I think is very interesting. So I'm going to share it to you. They, they like the project in general, it's ambitious, blah, blah, blah. However, my thesis, which I just presented to you, the Mediterranean as a volume, did not provide a sufficient over, overarching hypothesis and framework. While the work packages are interesting in themselves, there is too little evident interconnection. This was a problem in my, in my proposal that I wanted to make it so ambitious, so big, because that's what they tell you to, big, to do, 
that that I overdid it. it that there was no clear point of connection among all those things. The proposal would also benefit from more engagement with the rich body of literature on maritime history, especially French and Italian contributions. This is very interesting because two panelists made that comment, which one could conceive as being partly subjective, but two of them made the same comment. This means that, uh, and I was going from my field, which is usually history of science into a wider field of maritime history that I didn't know much of. And the, the reviewers, the expert reviewers, which informed then the big panel, the expert reviewers were from maritime history. And they told me, hey, you don't know, you don't know about, about you know, you don't know enough about our field to be able to contribute to it, much less to say that they're going to change it, right? And, and they had a point and I, I devoted much of the next year making sure I, I understood that field better. And then finally, the panel did not see clearly what the envisaged database would include or how it would function and how it would promote the project. Again, human and social sciences is huge. There are lots of diversity. In history, the digital humanities are have a big tradition, but they are probably slower than in other fields like demographics, for instance. And, and I was proposing a digital humanities component, which was very innovative, but I had no clue how to organize it. And that was evident in my project. So if you don't know how to do something, don't do it. I, although I must say, thanks to the feedback that I got about the first digital humanities component of the project, I could then draft what I think is a much um, serious and a strong um, one. So, so that's also okay to try and then allow me to continue with the feedback that I got, even if it's a little long, this comes from a specific reviewer. The other one was uh, the general impression. This is a specific reviewer. I will read it for you. You don't need to read it all, but um, the proposal should have taken into consideration the opportunity to detect and describe the Mediterranean topographies, not only from a biological naturalistic point of view, but also through the lens of their historical socioeconomic ev ev evolu evolution, sorry. Maritime history cannot be totally left aside. And they insist then in that I take into account too much Anglo, um, or yeah, Anglophone literature and too little French and Italian. This is very interesting because this means that the person who evaluated me probably comes from that other tradition, which if we are talking about the Mediterranean, Brodel is a big name. So yes, I should, I, and I mentioned Brodel, but I didn't go deep into discussing that, that huge tradition. And that's what I did in the second trial and it worked. So, so this was very interesting because it, it's really a problems of, of domains, of fields, of, of almost competition, but it was useful. Okay, the overall impression is that this operation aims only to provide a wider theoretical framework to highly specialized studies. That's it. They, they thought, okay, this guy is expanding, but he's actually expanding from his little corner of the world without incorporating enough of the other things. So be ambitious, but then you need to work for it. Okay, <laughs> don't just say it. But not all was bad in those evaluations. Of course, after all, I had made it to the interviews. And one of the things that they said is the excellent organization of the grant application. Okay, so let me explain you very briefly. I will try what was that organization of the grant application in case it can help you to draft yours. This is a table that I included in the first page of the, of the B1. And it, it, it's the, it contains the big three themes of the, of the proposal, borders of the state of the art. So the limits of the state of the art, let's say, deep meds novelty, what I propose, and then the scientific impact and also the social impact. And this, this table here is what I use to organize the rest of the application. The limits of this, and, and by the way, I have uploaded the B1 into my Academia IDU. So in case any of you wants, wants to use it, it's there for you to look at. This is how I organize it. I talked about Mediterranean studies. I talked about maritime history, oceanic history, and the history of oceanography, three different ways of writing about historical oceans. And then the novelties, I talked about the project's objectives, the methodology, and then the domains. And then of course, world packages. I will show you a little more about that. 
the specific objectives. This is how I organized, I crossed specific objectives, topographies, temporalities, and globalities with the domains that I specified, science and technology, strategy and environment. And I used this table to produce or to show work packages. Note that work package one is in several of these, of these items of the table. It doesn't mean that, you know, I, I, I think maybe in the first, so this might belong to the second proposal exactly. In the first proposal, I was a little more rigid and I tried that per each of the squares of the table, there was only one work package and this obsession with symmetry looked beautiful, but it was not very effective. So I was not that rigid in the second attempt, but this is what they meant by the organization of the, of the grant application, okay? So be very clear, use graphs if you can that show your main ideas, concepts and procedures because they are going to help readers to go through the, through the project. The methodology, I also use the graph, by the way, so making a pan with the three-dimensionality of the oceans, I, I use the three-dimensional um, methodology, as you can see, super general, interdisciplinary, transnational, digital, but then in the, pro in the proposal for per each of these concept got like a page or so of citing bibliography, of explaining what I really meant. So, so even though it sounds very general, I was able, I think, to, to apply it to the to my specific project very in a very specific way. Um, and that was basically it. So before handing over the word to Iñaki, one big tip, I think, find a consultant for help. That helped me a lot. My university had some special funds to apply for ERCs and I basically used that money. And, and they were not the best consultancy, I think. They were not specialized in my field, but they helped me a lot to think about a document that anyone could understand and that was beautifully presented and so on and so forth. If you're already very good at that, then you won't need it. Or if your university provides one, then you won't need it. But in my case, at least, and I suppose in many of your cases, that was very, very helpful. And then three resources. As I said, my B1 is in my Academia ID page, so you can, you can look at it. My presentation, so my presentation before the panel is available on YouTube in the project's website, which is called DeepMed. Note that in the first, in my first try, it was in person and, and they allowed me to bring a PowerPoint. The second try, the successful one was without PowerPoint and it was online. I don't know, this changes a little bit from year to year. So, so I don't, this presentation that it's online is the successful one and it is without PowerPoint. And one of the interesting things that you may notice in that, in that presentation is only five minutes. It's all very well staged. And I can't say it because it was not my idea, let's say. So I can say it was, it was good because it, I, didn't, I, I made it, of course, but I did it with the help of a coach. And I'm not saying an academic coach, like, a, like, a, like you know, these guys that has, have studied marketing and they go to big companies to tell them how to do pitches. So this is what I did, the, the startup pitch. Um, how did I find that guy? which I would have never even looked if, if it had never, it would have never occurred to me through a service that the Ministerio provides if you make it to the interview phase. So if any of you make it to the interview phase, the Ministerio de la Ciencia, I think does, that also changes, they will write you and offer the service, take it because you will do a mock interview with experts in your field. But you will also maybe, that also changes, get the services of this coach. And although I, I, I was kind of skeptical at the beginning, it helped, it helped. 